Go to Julie, and I hope you're not putting too much syrup on that French toast, Julie. <laughs> I'm not even eating any French toast this morning, Bevan. Good morning. Welcome to Richie's Restaurant. We're up here at Richie's Restaurant at the corner of Richmond Street and High Park Road, Fanshawe Road, I believe. Anyway, we're up here thanks to Louis Lathoris, who is our host this morning. I have five of the six candidates who are in the home stretch for the London North by-election, which is, as Bevan mentioned, on the 31st, Thursday night. So join us this morning. We'll be popping back here a number of times to have a chat with these folks find out what they're all about and how they're doing in the home stretch first of all here's the news with jennifer reed first edition we're up here at richie's restaurant richmond row and fanshawe park road we're going to be talking to the candidates today five of the six candidates in the london north by-election which is going to be held on this thursday night there already has been some advanced polling so let's introduce you down the table then to my left diane cunningham the tory candidate in the party if i'll sit back here and get out of the way Beside Diane is Barry Malcolm from the Freedom Party. And at the end of the table, Brenda Rowe from the Family Coalition Party. Switch over to the other side on my right is Diane Whiteside, our NDP Hi. candidate. Good morning. And Elaine Pensa, our Liberal candidate. Good morning. So let's start actually on the other side of the table now. Diane Cunningham, let's start with you. How's the campaign been going? You've only got three, well, four days, I suppose, counting today left. It's been very busy, and we still have lots to do. It's been interesting, and I think the voters are interested in the issues. Um, we're really um, excited about this one and uh, can hardly wait till Thursday night. This is a massive riding. It's yes, just huge. It's very, it's very large. It's, um, as far as the school board election is going, it's about half the, uh, twice the size of what we have to do there. So how hard is it to and get around to? Everybody? Very difficult. We, we have a, a plan, and we're, we're about 70% there, and time is running out, but it is. It's, uh, it takes a long time, especially uh, the door knocking uh, is almost impossible to get to everyone, although we're doing our best. And the signs are, are impossible. I mean, just putting them up from one end of the uh, riding to the other and having keeping them, them up, up and having them stay up and repairing them. It is a, it's a giant undertaking. Um, it's uh, challenging. It's, it's called democracy and, uh, and uh, we're enjoying it, but it is a, it's, it's quite an undertaking and quite a challenge. Okay, let's move down the table a little bit. Barry, how is your campaign going? You've only got the four days left. Also. Yes, it's going quite well. I've been, been, uh, got a lot of support from uh, my volunteers and members, and it's, it's uh, been a super effort on their part to help me out. Brenda, you're a fringe party candidate as well. Is it harder for you and Barry, I would suppose, to get around to all the doors not having as many volunteers? I, I find it very difficult. Uh, I'm also holding down a full-time job at the same time, so it's very difficult for me to uh, get out and get to everyone's households. Okay. Family Coalition Party is a relatively new party. How is it going? We don't run the same type of campaign as the more established parties because we don't have the huge team of uh, volunteers and, and enough money to cover, you know, our full gamut of allowable expenses. So if we're working, we work, and then we go out and knock some doors and whatnot. Um, I've been meeting a lot of people during this campaign that are sort of um, um, resource people and whatnot, and it's been a lot of fun. There's We're going to find out a little bit more about everybody's campaign, how it's going, and we'll get right into the issues as well. First of all, let's find out what's on TV London tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Welcome to Breakfast at Richie's. We're talking to five of the six candidates running in the London North by-election on the 31st this Thursday night. We're going to go down the other side of the table now. Diane Whiteside, our NDP candidate. How's your campaign going? It's going uh, quite different from the last uh, election. In what way? In what way? Very uh, upbeat. There's a lot more uh, uh, powerful uh, uh, events going on. I think uh, we've had more all-candidates debates, especially in one week, than, uh, than we had in the last one. Um, I think, too, there's a lot more people down from, uh, from Toronto and uh, a lot more support this time around. I think it's quite important to a real push. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're all sitting here very friendly, but I imagine when it gets down to the grind, you can uh, fight it out. Well, it's, uh, it is a, a tough fight, and, uh, and there are some very important issues that we've been uh, um, getting across and trying to inform the people of, and, uh, and vice versa. There's a lot of concerns out there that uh, people have, other than the, the usual uh, Sunday shopping um, and whatnot. Okay, let's save the issues for sure, a couple sure, minutes. Sure, that's fine. Issues. Moving down the table, we'll go to our Liberal candidate, Elaine Pensa. How is your campaign going? Well, we've uh, had a lot of momentum since the beginning of January, actually, because we went from the nomination stage into an election campaign, and 
I'm delighted. You can see the supporters behind me. <laughs> They're all dressed in red. <laughs> They're all dressed in red. And they are upbeat. And they've kept my spirits up, certainly. And uh, it's been great. How is, how is your campaign going on the standpoint that I, I think probably of everybody sitting at the table here, you may be about the least known politically, except for our independent candidate, John Termel, but he's quite well known as well. How is your campaign going from that standpoint? Do people know who you are? Um, well, I certainly think we had that uh, recognition factor to begin with, and we addressed it immediately. Um, if you notice, we got our signs up quickly. So I think I'm finding as I go around the riding that um, I have another kind of recognition from the point of view that I've worked in the riding for a number of years as citizenship court judge. I've been involved in other activities as well. And um, you know, when I go door to door, I find that there's people that uh, have remembered me from times before. Even um, parents of children that I taught in the riding, well, 30 years ago. It's amazing. So I've enjoyed that part of it, too. Okay, terrific. We're going to everybody think of their hottest issue. We'll come back and we'll discuss the issues with the candidates from the London North riding. First edition continues after this. Yeah, breakfast at Richie's, where Richie's I restaurant up on the corner of Richmond and Fanshawe Park Road. If you're out, please drop by. We're talking to five of the six candidates running in the London North by-election, which is being held on Thursday night. We're going to start off. We can interrupt with Diane Cunningham. We can interrupt with having breakfast and chatting. Friendly. That's nice to see. What do you see as the most important issue in the election so far from all the people you've talked to? Well, I think the issue for, for almost everyone at the door in the last three or four days has been the, the spending and uh, what they perceive as uncontrolled spending. And uh, they're very concerned about it. I think generally I could say that they're disappointed. They, uh, they you know, very proud of uh, having the Premier in the riding and they were, had great expectations for the performance. And they thought uh, right now they're just totally disappointed and they, they want to send a message. And I'm, I believe they will send a message because uh, you know, 10% spending three years in a row when everyone else is taking home less than 5% really means something to them. Now, how is your popularity going to help you in this? You're popular from previous... Well, I was, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I walk around this city pretending no one knows who I am. Most of the time I wish they didn't, but uh, no, they know me. And uh, that's great. And they remember things that I've done for them on the school board. Uh, whether that turns into votes or not, I don't know. Uh, one isn't... One doesn't do things because of that. They do it because they believe in it. Let's, uh, can I interrupt you and sure. let's go to the party in power. Elaine, how can you counter that? Diane was saying people are really concerned about the spending. Do you have an argument for that? Well, first of all, I think the question was what's the most important issue in this campaign. As far as I'm concerned, it's uh, who can best represent London North um, within the provincial parliament. And I believe that um, the Peterson's, record, Peterson's government record speaks for itself as well. They, um, I think they get good marks for economic management. We have top international credit ratings. They did have, since taking office, reduced the deficit. They've had a lot of catching up to do. They've addressed the issues of underfunding as far as education, hospitals, and the like. And there's still a lot more to do. They were given a mandate in the fall, and uh, they're not completed yet. And I hope to be part of that team. Okay. Thanks very much. We're going to come back with some more of the issues from our fringe candidates, our NDP candidate. But first, we'll go back to the studio for Jennifer Reed in the news. Welcome back to Richie's Restaurant. We're talking with five of the six candidates from the London North by-election this Thursday night. But we also have with us a number of their helpers, their volunteers and friends, and probably one of the youngest liberals that I've ever seen. There he is. Someone I love is a liberal. Kids and puppies. Don't they get you every time? <laughs> Nice touch, Elaine. Oh. Okay, we were, we were talking about... I didn't have anything to do with the mom. It's right. We're pulling baby pictures out here now. Yeah. Okay, let's People continue with some of the, the issues. Pictures. We're going to go down this side of the table now, if we can, down to Barry and Brenda. Now, when I said fringe parties before, you both jumped and said, don't call us a fringe party. Yeah. Brenda, tell me, why not? The public have a perception of fringe, meaning powerless and, and um, inconsequential. Give me what you think is the main issue in this by-election. Sunday shopping, uh, the need for the federal government to give people a right to be born, and a high school 
the people in Guana High School. Okay, we have I've heard a lot of people Catholic complaining about their sewers, yeah. too, but I think we'd have to pass that <laughs> over to the municipality. Well, let's pass that one over to Barry. <laughs> let's go to you, Barry. You probably have some opposing views. I think you're the only one who is for Sunday shopping. What's, well, what's the most important <clears throat> issue? Is that it? I think uh, it's not a matter of being for Sunday shopping. It's a matter of uh, being for the individual to make his choice, his or her choice, on the matter. Um, all the other candidates and parties think that someone else should have that choice and we believe that it should be left up to a particular individual and that's what sets us apart from the rest of the uh, parties. It almost sounds like you don't really <coughs> stand for something though. Oh, no, no, no. We're standing for the individual's right to open and we stand for yeah. property rights, individual rights, freedom of religion. Um, that's what we stand for. That's what we wish, to, that's what government should be protecting in our eyes. Um, where, the, as I said, the rest of the parties and candidates think someone else should be making that personal choice for you. Okay. Um, and also have the, uh, pay the taxes to go along with those uh, choices. Okay, we only have one person left, Diane Whiteside, our NDP candidate. What is the most important issue that you're hearing? You mentioned there were a number of them door to door. Well, there certainly are, but I, I'd like to uh, address Diane Cunningham and, and her statement of the overspending of the, uh, the, f uh, the Liberal government. Yet, in other uh, meetings with the Education <coughs> Department, she's saying that there's uh, underfunding of, uh, of the government, so it's uh, out of both sides. Um, and I think with, uh, with Elaine, there's a lot of talk about how the government is doing just a swell job, but there's, uh, there seems to be, and, and I get it from door to door, a lot of broken promises uh, by Peterson. Uh, uh, child care, he promised uh, affordable child care. There's, we've seen none of that. He's promised uh, an increase in the uh, 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 teachers for, uh, for public schools, uh, teacher-student ratio. We've seen none of that. Um, you know, he's, he's just gone back on all of his uh, promises that, that he's made during the last election. And I think that's what the people are, uh, are seeing and complaining about. And that's one of the things that I'm addressing and, and saying, you know, let's, let's not have all this political rhetoric and these promises during election time just to get yourself into power. Let's, let's be honest and, and run a fair campaign and have you know, fair taxes and, uh, and look out for the people that, uh, that whose concerns are not being met. Yeah, Let me ask. Will you be bringing up the uh, subject of taxes too, Diane? I, say we, I say we have a fair tax tax system. Mm -hmm. And that means we've got a regressive tax system right now. All taxes are regressive. I think, that the, I think really that people are concerned. Um, Diane's point is not well taken because there's less of the provincial pie on education than ever before. Um, the, the one promise that people are very upset about is passing the buck back to the municipality on education. There's less of the provincial dollar being spent on education. And of course dollar. everyone knows that we're going to be spending more money. They have more money to spend. They had 1.2 billion that they didn't expect mm -hmm. to get. Oh, I feel and where did they spend it? I think they should schools. spend it on education. Oh, I agree. And at the same time, there will be tax increases, but 10% in a 4.5% year is exceptionally high. It's more than people but are the tax prepared system, to spend. The tax system but right now, that's that's the way it goes. You. Let they me understand. stop you there. We'll come back to this, and we'll yeah. continue it at the table, and I hope you'll join us when we come back again. First of all, this commercial. You might need a helping Thanks hand. Thanks very That's much, right. Jane. I haven't we stopped need a here. Hand. We're still debating. What are we debating now? We've talked about a number of issues. We were talking about... The size uh, of the bureaucracy. Size Let's of the do bureaucracy. that one. Absolutely. Uh, let me throw another one in. Let me throw in Catholic education. Somebody run with it. I was High driving schools. down Coronation Road in Cambridge, and there's an absolutely tremendous abortuary that's been built there, which would be big enough to house the high school. Why don't they spend their money where it's needed? The high school the, one is, is one that is a... There's a a responsible solution to it and the responsible solution is to put up the money I mean without Bill 30 we would have needed a new high school all of a sudden we're stuck and the separate school board I'm has had it on there that the, uh, for two or three years I'm confident that the uh, there is going to be a satisfactory resolution to this problem both boards are working cooperatively the public board certainly and the separate board have agreed there's no space in the public system for the separate school and they have supported the separate school in their application for capital funding. They are still at the um, negotiation no, stage. We're not no any. arbitration. Well, we know it's we're not anymore. Do you, hear all this, do you hear all this bickering? Oh, that would all stop done. with Freedom Party's approach by giving the taxpayer <laughs> back his education taxes 
and let him put, put it to the school of his choice. This would all stop. <laughs> but would all the send their kids to school, Barry? Or would some of the parents take that tax credit? I, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to make a tape of that. Yes, Prime Minister. Absolutely. Show and, and show it to all of you and see how ridiculous this all is. Yeah. You know? We know what happens You're sometimes with food vouchers. It's the same thing. But really, on the school issue, we are finished our negotiations. I, I mean, I wouldn't be taking such a strong stand. Uh, we'll wait until the end of March and see what the capital looks like, and I hope Elaine's right. I really do, and I know capital she does, too. Money, right? Capital dollars. That's yeah. what we need and in this province. Let's hope we don't get portables, because uh, well, they're one, very unsafe. They have increased by 200% in the last year, and that's the direction the province is moving in. We needed $900 billion in this province. We got 200 and that's the way it goes. $900 million, excuse yeah. me. We got 200 for the whole province. And this is a booming time for kids. We're looking at a 25% increase mm -hmm. in numbers. So although the Conservatives were, they complained because they didn't build, they were in a decline. They were supposed to fill up the empty schools, and that's what we had to do. And that was, I mean, that, that just made sense. But now we're growing. We need more schools, and the government knows it. The projections are there. Everybody knows. Take a look at that little guy. We know when he's going to school. Mm -hmm. For five years, we know who will be there, and it really is a challenge. Okay. First chance for you folks to yeah. debate, I think. The Conservatives back and forth the table. have had power for so, so long. How can you blame this problem on the Liberals and the, the NDP? Things have changed in the last three years. We know we're, on a, we know we're in a growth pattern High for school schools. High school kids weren't born three, three years ago. Nothing's they changed. They were born the five years ago. And if the Conservatives had been in power, they would have put the money into, into the capital. Nothing's that changed. Was the plan. Nothing the politicians will change the debate are still either. spending money on their priorities, That's not right. on the parents of the students' uh, priorities. Children me, are the priorities. Let me cut it there. Of course. We'll be I'm right sure. back. We're going to continue this one over yeah. the table. Join us in a minute. Thanks very much, Louis, for letting us use the restaurant this morning. Lots of noise in here this morning. Let's get back to our debate. Is the campaign fun, or are you folks fighting over here? Are you having a good time? Oh, this is good. This is good. Yeah. It's the first chance we've had to fight. They usually cut you off right in the middle of your nine yeah. seconds up. Yeah. Okay, you got two minutes. Absolutely. Pick else up and I'm very the unemployed workers. The uh, the funding for or the uh, the increase in the social assistance uh, rate. Twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. Diane, you've uh, you've uh, declined on that. Uh, no, I haven't. Increase. I signed the petition and I said there was room in this government to help people that were poor. Now, Elaine, you didn't. I'm part of the Thompson no. the whole, the whole right, study said, and had said, to do uh, with it. You didn't read it uh, well enough and said that you weren't well, willing to have Well, 25% immediately meeting. means tomorrow, and you couldn't do that either, Diane. Let's face it. It was a ridiculous statement, and I'm sorry I signed the immediately part. The 25% can happen. It can happen to the people that really deserve it. It can happen by cutting but out the really? bureaucracy. Okay. Let me get and everybody knows it. You didn't sign Everybody didn't knows it. On the, um, the government yeah. spends something like $1.7 billion a year on social assistance. I, I said what I'd like to do is address the problems of the needy who are with us. But I would first like to see the report, the Social Assistance Review Committee report, before we decide where those new monies must be allocated. Barry? When will it come? Um, well, Mr. Clark didn't even bother coming to the Freedom Party office because he knows that uh, we believe the taxpayer's pocket isn't there to be picked. What, what, these, what the, these people need is they need opportunity. They need less taxes, which all the other, the other parties are going to pay for all these government programs. And what these people need are jobs. They need opportunity. And all the free market best does that, provides jobs, Provides wealth. And they need and, child and care for women. Okay. Care. And, and, the and the free, the free was struck in 86 and was supposed to have reported in the spring of 87, Let again in the fall <laughs> of 87, and it still hasn't reported. Let me jump in and stop you there. We can continue after the show's over. We've got to throw a bag. Bevan, don't you wish you were here right in on this <laughs> argument? Actually, I do. It looks as if the uh, gloves are starting mean. to come off.